And I'll call for order the May 15, 2017 meeting of the New County Independent School District Board of Trustees at 6.30 p.m. Let the minutes show that the quorum is present and Ms. Shipley being absent. Please rise for the invocation to be given by Mr. Wooten and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and honor the Texas flag to be led by Mr. Mixon. Would you bow with me, please? Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, just thankful for who you are. Lord, we thank you for our students for their families, Lord, here tonight to recognize their achievement. Father, we're thankful for this district, for the hearts of its teachers and administrators. I pray, God, that tonight you would give us wisdom as we make decisions. And Father, that you would guide us in all that we do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to Texas. One state, under God, one indivisible. Well, I'll determine the agenda's recognitions. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Paul Batchelder to present the Energy Conservation Poster Contest winners. Um, 
Um, all right. And up next, from Sorters Mill Elementary, Esmeralda Liddell. And we did this in honor of Earth Day, so this was our Earth Day themed winner. Alexis Blake, and this was the most explicit poster winner we have, Save Electricity. And our high school visual communications class had a bunch of great submissions, but this was our winner, and it's from Angelina Pavorichin. Is that right? Thank you.
Gabriela Pavarotti. Paige Hope. Jacob Spurgers. Maria Correa. Priscilla Sapita. Scarlett Sanders. Tristan Reitzel. Teddy Arocha.
Um, and she was a district champion, regional champion, and finished 18th in the state cross country round rock. Nelson, the boys head track coach. Uh, the representative we have for our track team is uh, Cameron Washington, who finished ninth in the state in the long jump and is also a regional and area champion in the long jump as well. My name is Newell McDougall, I'm representing Porter High School of College. Uh, I'd like to introduce Miranda Houseman. Academic All State. Uh, Miranda went through the 114 pound weight class, was 10th overall in the state of Texas, and had the second highest bench press in the state of Texas. Miranda House. Good evening. My name is Leslie Richardson. I'm the sponsor of Industry Fair. And the following students advanced to the state competition this past May. Sophia Stern. Lisa Stern. Josh and Bach. with Ford High School um, OSA, the Health Occupation Students of America. And this year I had a student uh, place first place in uh, the state. She plays in life sports field and she is going to nationals, Ms. Victoria Rivera. SA Engineering. And these following students have had advanced to the state level competition for Skills USA Engineering. Jessica Bat. <laughs> Jacob Spurgers. <laughs> Stephen Basal. Our teacher at Porter High School, and I have the proud honor to uh, announce. 
panelists, Tanner Hodgkinson, Bay State, he is also a Congressional Art winner. <laughs> Gracie Evers is also a Bay State and a Congressional Third Place winner. And Caitlin Doak.
Good evening. My name is Melissa Adams. I'm the choir director of Nikki High School, and I have students to represent the choir this evening because they uh, advance to the state open ensemble competition, which will be held on Memorial Day weekend. And these students are Leah Bellamy, Shelby Dillon. Billy Elliott, <laughs> Hannah Dockery, <laughs> Jennifer Maldonado, <laughs> Vanessa Orozco, <laughs> Logan Palomo, Jocelyn Rodriguez. And Edgar Solis. University Interscholastic League, sponsored by the University of Texas, is the largest student organization in the world. Uh, we have competitors like Walter Cronkite and a lot of famous people who have taken part in it. Um, we are placing in an event like that is really quite an accomplishment. And I wasn't really surprised when Chris Torres and Ali Rami finished second in state. There, um, I actually kind of thought they would take first place. Uh, it's quite an honor to be able to do that. If you went to the University of Texas in October and saw the competitors, you'd see students with video cameras running all over the campus shooting video. These are very, very gifted young men, and I'm sure you're going to be hearing a lot more of them in the future. Ali Rami.
afternoon slash evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Bill Pendleton. I'm the uh, Deputy Advisor for Duquesne High Schools. I'm going to introduce our, uh, our district winners and our state competitors uh, for this school year. Uh, these kids work really hard all year long. Um, we try to uh, stay ahead of the game and uh, like sport. We're always uh, trying to get better and we compete in a bunch of marketing academic challenges. And so these kids put in a lot of work even over the summer. And uh, some of them do papers and some of them have to do presentations in front of people. Uh, so they do a lot of stuff uh, and a lot of hard work and they're basically doing it all year round. So uh, I'm really proud of them. Uh, first one I'd like to recognize is uh, Meredith Kane. Her sister Mallory King. Uh, Sheldon Mutworth. Mystery Roberson. Second team for culinary. These kiddos uh, placed third at region and then they placed fifth at second. Caleb Bauer. Okay, 
am representing our youngest ever SCCLA member to compete for New Caney High School. Uh, she placed fifth in her state, uh, in the state, Laura Lorenz, for career investigation. I represent, I'm the sponsor for our Technology Student Association Club and the following group of the students uh, made it to state and they are Skylin Acosta
recognize Jasmine O'Brien. Uh, Jasmine uh, is a two-year uh, letterman course, and uh, this year uh, she was able to reach, I mean, she did amazing. It's uh, really a tribute to uh, somebody that uh, stuck with the program, and she was, she was very driven in what she did, really put in a lot of work, and was able to eat, even, even at the state meet, uh, she, she did more than she had done the whole year, so it was really awesome. Thank everybody for all y'all's hard work. Looks like we had another successful year with the students. So appreciate everybody's hard work. Pass that on to your sponsors. <coughs> appreciate it. Out of three on the agenda is consideration of out-of-state field trip for Porter High School at CCLA. Presented by Mr. Strickland. Good evening. I'm here with uh, Sandy Nall and Lauren Frega to ask permission for uh, the team from Culinary Arts at Porter High School to attend national competition in Nashville, Tennessee. And thank you for your time. We have nine students qualifying for nationals this year. We had three who qualified last year, so we tripled our amount, so we're very proud of them. We have four teams, and we are excited to get them to Nashville this year. So um, we've got two competing in life events and, and two competing in a virtual business competition, so something like kind of like the game of life. And so they obviously won it. Any questions? Is there a motion to approve the out of state trip for Porter High School SCCLA? Absolutely. <coughs> motion has been moved to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is approved. Good luck to y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have a little fun too. Oh, yeah. Brand new law firm. Out of four on the agenda is consideration of out-of-state field trip for Porter High School Band, presented by Mr. Parks. Good evening. Uh, band directors at Porter High School would like to request permission to take the band on a failed trip next June 2018 uh, to New York City. 18? Well, so thank you for your time and all of your support for the Florida High School Band Program. We're really excited about the growth that we're experiencing at Florida High School. And we started about seven years ago with the school opening with about, about 25, 30 kids in the band. We'll have 220 plus in the band program next year, so we're looking to have some awesome numbers. With that, we've got great interest in the students who are going to an out of state trip in 2018, so we've begun our plan for that already. And we're looking to go to New York City. We're, we're trying to get to the Lincoln Center to where we can do a performance. It would be an outdoor performance uh, June 11th to June 15th. So we have a, a really great itinerary and program that we would like to discuss with the parents, but I'm seeking the board's approval to, to allow us to go to New York City for the next year. Well, all, all members are, are going? It will be, it will be a, a paid trip for the students, and, and we'll try to make it to where as many students as possible can go for the next year. Um, this will be our third big annual trip to go to a, a major, major, major trip. We've gone to uh, Disney World in the past couple of years, and the students pay for that trip. But we offer many opportunities to fundraise for that. So most of them have the opportunity to do it. Out of the 220, how many do you think will not get? We're hoping that we can get 100 plus to go to that to that to go to the performance. 
questions? Is there a motion to approve the out of state field trip for Porter High School band? Second. Motion to be moved second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. As opposed? Motion is approved. Thank you so much. Good luck. Out of five on the agenda is public hearing for District of Innovation. Innovation presented by Dr. <coughs> Good evening. We talk a lot about District of Innovation, and tonight uh, I'm here to do the mandated public hearing um, to give our audience a chance to hear what the plan is all about. Um, and then hopefully we can get that going, and we won't have to talk about it for a while. We'll talk about it a while. Okay, so we've got to turn it on, right? Let's go over what District of Innovation is. Um, it's a, de a designation that allows our school district to be more flexible um, and take advantage of what the charter schools take advantage of. It was passed by the 84th Legislation Session in House Bill 1842. It maximizes local control, local flexibility, uh, provides for a local approval option in, the form in place of a formal waiver system, and provides NCISD um, to design an innovation plan according to our needs and resources. So this was the process. There was a resolution. Uh, then you guys asked us to uh, get a committee together, which our DLAC um, did a fantastic job with. Um, and we designed that um, plan. We put it online for 30 days for anybody to, to look at. And then our next process to, is to adopt. And so here's our plan. What it, um, we're going to talk, start with the class size ratio. Uh, our proposal is that the district will no longer have to submit annual size waivers that are continually approved by TEA. Um, the district will continue to maintain established class size thresholds of kindergarten at 23 students to one and grades one through four at 24 students to one. The district will provide parent class size notification and start of school as well as you will be kept informed. Uh, we also want to be flexible with our uniform uh, school start date. Um, we definitely need this will help us to try to manage but when we're opening schools. Um, so Brady can explain that a lot better, but um, it definitely is a, is a plus for us. This flexibility of start allows the district to determine locally on an annual basis what be best meets the needs of the students and local community. Uh, this empowers the district to personalize learning, increase college and career readiness, and balance the amount of instructional time per semester. In addition, by having the flexibility in the start and end time of the school year, students will be able to enroll in college courses that start in May and early June, thereby increasing college readiness, career and college readiness. Um, our next area is um, looking at the minimum minutes of instruction. The main reason right now we're doing this is because our pre-K um, we have a difficult time getting all the minutes in and um, there's there's some legislation out there right now that would give us flexibility but on the case that it does not pass um, we want to be able to um, have our half day programs um, go at 37 800 minutes okay um, the next one is 90 percent attendance rule the ones we talked about seat time um, with innovative ways for learners to learn virtual classroom learning opportunities, we will need an exemption from the 90% seat time attendance rule as set forth in this code. McKinney ISD would maintain a minimum attendance percentage for traditional classes while allowing flexibility in students demonstrating mastery of content with an innovative system and more flexible pace. Our next area is certification requirements. Um, our HR department is very very excited about this. Um, those hard to find um, teachers in our areas such as Kate, um, we feel like this will really help us. Um, we'll find teachers um, that maybe we want them to have a degree um, and then when we hire them we will then ask them to get their certification. But this, this way we can recruit some people that actually have experiences in our field um, and then we can help get them um, certified. Next is our designation of campus behavior coordinator. 
Um, this proposal is for the district to abstain from the state requirement that each school have a designated campus behavior coordinator. Uh, we believe all of our um, administrators should have that title, um, and so we're, we're, we can better uh, use their, their talents to help our kids. The last one is um, the appraisal and performance criteria. Um, New Caney ISD believes that this is not the best interest of our schools to um, evaluate our teachers based on test scores, and this will allow us to um, to take advantage of that. So that is our district innovation. Our timeline again: we met um, with our team um, in 2016. Um, we gave you the, the information in February. In March, um, we adopted the resolution, we did a public hearing, and then we appointed a committee. Um, in April, we developed a plan, DLAC approved it, and we um, posted it for 30 days. And hopefully, we can get that approved. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that concludes the public hearing. Item six on the agenda is consideration of approved district of innovation plan. On behalf of the KISD, we would like to for you to approve or, or rec recommend that you approve uh, the district of innovation. Any questions? Is there a motion to approve the district of innovation plan? So moved. Second. Motion to move the second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. Thank you. Uh, Seven on the agenda is open forum. I don't think we have anybody sign up for that. <coughs> Item eight on the agenda is closed meeting. The board will now meet and close meeting under the authority of Texas Government Code Section 551.074 for the purpose of personnel matters. Government Code 551.071 for attorney consultation and Government Code 551.072 for deliberation regarding the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. Any action as a result of the closed Session discussion will take place after the board reconvenes an open meeting. The time is 723. Okay, the board is closed meeting at 8 15 p.m. and will now reconvene an open session. I do not have the agenda of reports and proposals of board members. Item 10 on the agenda is a consent count of consideration consisting of consideration of minutes, consideration of financial reports, consideration of purchase reports, and consideration of personnel reports. Any questions on the consent count? Okay. A motion to approve the items on the consent count. Okay. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion is approved. Item 11 on the agenda is consideration of approval for increase in meal prices presented by Ms. Needham. So I'd like to make a recommendation that we go up on meal pricing. Uh, we have not had an increase since the 14 14 year. I know I didn't say it in our um, action on that it was 14 15, but I went back and it was 13 14. Our breakfast will remain free, which is free to all students. Meal price increase, we've had an increase in participation by about 9% at breakfast and lunch, which is tremendous. We're reaching about 73% of our students, um, which if you're reaching 60% with a um, meal program, you're doing an excellent job. So um, by going up on meal pricing, we will be able to uh, afford more of the fresh fruits and vegetables that we are mandated to serve currently are mandated to serve um, fresh fruit or vegetables um, every day to our students and we are maintaining that but with the prices of uh, groceries for lately it has been very difficult to maintain some of the items that we would like to uh, serve so at the high school we would go from 275 to three dollars which would mean a student in a secondary which would be sixth grade or 12 if they are um, eating five days a week, 
they're eating breakfast and lunch, it maintains their pricing still at $15 a week because of breakfast being free. So your lunch prices offsets those mandated fruits and vegetables that we have to serve as well at breakfast. So, um, and then in the elementary school, we will go from $250 to $275. Okay. Uh, quarter. A quarter. A quarter makes a difference. Average fruit price just for fruit cut runs about 43 cents. So, um, you know, we're not offsetting. We have not had an increase from a USDA. Currently, um, Mr. Purdue is looking at increasing that. We have not had any reauthorization in the last three years for child nutrition. So currently, a free student receives a meal, and we receive a reimbursement of $3.18. So we receive $0.26 cents on a paid student. So if you have a paid student at $2.50, you receive the additional $0.26. Cents. You still have not reached the increment that you would need to provide a meal. And an average plate cost Right now, it's running about $1.95 to even prepare the plate with food costs, and then you have to still include your labor and benefits in that. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any relief with the new I do see government? lots of relief on the way. Mr. Purdue is a chicken farmer, Purdue Farms, and so um, he believes in nutritious meals. He stated he had 14 grandchildren, and he would be serving them. Nutritious meals. I did meet with um, Senator Cruz last month. It was a very positive meeting. Um, he is one that does believe in block grants, but um, after explaining how it would affect the meal program with the block grant, if we had a Katrina incident, it could devastate our districts because of the amount of funding on a block grant. You would be allotted so much money, and then if you had an influx of people, how are you going to feed those students? If we continue with the program the way it is, then we would be able to maintain and provide meals for those students. Any questions? So how exactly do you get a kid to only spend fifteen dollars a week on? <laughs> yeah. I'd like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to figure that out. Can so I get on that boat? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't like your kids coming through. <laughs> And what we want to do is reach out to the kids. Um, you know, we've recently implemented some new programs with the students, and we do offer uh, wow meals, which are a more of a white meat, whole muscle chicken that we're able to serve. And those meals run about $3.75. And um, students that are qualified for free and reduced do still get the white wow meal values as well. We don't segregate the students. So, but the kids are enjoying the fresh fruits and vegetables. New Caney High School, we have our build your own line, which is lined up every day. We push um, fresh fruits and vegetables out there, so they add their own toppings to their burgers, whatever the meal may be. So we're seeing a great influx there. And I look forward to the renovation there because I think we'll continue to see some increases as well. Questions? So, a motion to approve the increase in meal prices. So moved. Second. Motion to move and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item 12 on the agenda is consideration to approve a change order for extension <coughs> of the Stadium East Field entrance on the Bond 2015 District Navigator. Mr. Gates. <laughs> yeah, this one is what you call is to widen up this side of the field, you know, the access to it, and that's what this one's all about. Uh, kind of talking about it, so if y'all have any questions, so I can answer this for you. This one was covered in the bomb work that in the workshop that the other night. Is there any, other, any questions? A motion to approve change order for extension of Stadium East Field Entrance Bond 2015 District Mandatorium. Second. Motion to move. Say all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion is approved. Second. Item 13 on the agenda is consideration to approve the change order for on site water and sewer extension Bond 2015 Dogwood Elementary School. On that one, uh, I can increase the cost to go ahead and cover the other half of that. The other day it was uh, 150, so we went ahead and moved it up so we could cover the other off site costs. Uh, that's why it's not to exceed the amount. That's the part that we it's off our property, 600 feet goes up there. That way we can go ahead and move forward. Obviously, 
obviously we need to get the water to the job site here pretty soon. We have some long lead items, so I'll probably go ahead and approve it all. We got to have it. Um, they get here back today, but actually the, the Intex and the other public entity that approved us to go ahead and start the work. Uh, so that's one little change that you'll see from the last time. Siri's got something for you back there. Is that a motion to approve change order for on site water and sewer extension bond 2015 at Dogwood Elementary School? Second. Motion to approve the second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. Item uh, 14 on the agenda is consideration of work construction contract for New Cady Middle School addition and renovations to Division One construction of oh, uh, bond Consideration approved change order to renovate cheer classrooms to LGI on 2015 at New Canaan High School. Yes, that was the one that we're going to fill in upstairs up right in the auditorium, which also includes those two classrooms, the restroom, and the elevator. Any questions? So, a motion approved change order to renovate cheer classrooms to LGI. 2015 New County High School. So moved. Second. Motion been moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. Item 16 on the agenda is consideration of change order to the change order to four scoreboard. Start up. Consideration That's to a uh, change order for scoreboard at, at the Navatorium. This is the double the size of the uh, scoreboard and the natatorium, which is the original size we wanted in the first place. So this is to do that, to get it back where we want it. Is there a motion to approve change order for scoreboard and natatorium on 2015? Second. Motion to move to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is approved. Okay. Thank you very much. You know for a minute. Item <laughs> uh, 17 on the agenda is consideration of the city's assessment and capital improvement plan agreement with LAN presented by Mr. Robbins. That's right. Thank you. Is that right? Good evening. Good evening, y'all. Got a short presentation, just about 10 slides or so. I want to talk with you about uh, the condition assessment, long range plan, and uh, district standards, the main objectives we want to achieve, and those sorts of things. So I'll get right into it. Trying to keep up with Mr. Gates and his. Wrap the pace of fire. Super. There we go. Okay, so uh, the three things that the district had asked for our firm to perform were uh, uh, design standards, facility assessments, and help plan for the future, as well as some long range capital planning information. We're a group that does nothing but K 12 program and project management work, and we're currently doing exactly this kind of work for several of the districts around the state. So we're well equipped to help you satisfy and solve the problems that you've got in front of you. Presentation just in three small parts, focusing on design standards, assessments, and planning for the future. So the first thing we'll start with is those design standards. Uh, so focusing again on the outcomes here. What is it that we want to achieve through the course of developing these design standards? There's a long list of things that you can read on the left side of the slide. School capacity, uh, developing some support for educational programs, 
focusing on things about finishes, fit materials, making sure that as the district evolves and grows, we have standards in place to achieve uniformity, to have uh, consistency and equity across all the spaces that are being constructed and considered. With the rapid growth, it's a great strategy to have in mind. Uh, continuing with some of those outcomes, space relationships, uh, working on the adjacencies and the relationships between the spaces, uh, and then ultimately look, turning those into very broad performance expectations for the district. We'll work on developing standards that are for the elementary, middle school, and high school. And on the screen, you can see a small sample of the kinds of things that would be produced ultimately. These are uh, standards for, say, a typical classroom, standards for a laboratory space, maybe more broadly standards for uh, how many students might occupy a school at any given time, or preferences for other fits and features of the building. So facility condition assessment is the next part of our work. Uh, here, we're looking at outcomes that are what we would call user-friendly. Uh, we will use a database type of system to do our assessment work, ultimately leaving the district with a computerized program that will allow uh, you to make many, many decisions going forward. The kind of information that we'll gather and present to you uh, will be dynamic. It's not static information, so when we do this assessment, it's linked to a live cost estimating program, so as time progresses, you'll have the ability to make future forecasts and adjustments. Uh, it's scalable, uh, meaning that we can adjust this thing with the help of Mr. Gates, fit the kinds of needs that New Caney would identify in terms of uh, soft costs and these sorts of things. And ultimately, it's based on the work of our professional architecture and engineering team as we develop this assessment. When we talk about outcomes, and I mentioned to you that it's a live and living database, on your screen here you can see some examples of that. We've got some graphs that help to depict sort of some what-if scenarios so you can say to yourself, what if we didn't spend any money on our deferred maintenance needs? What does that start to look like in the long term? graph here on your left is just a small example of how this line ticks up if you don't spend money on your facilities. You're not meant to read any of this, it's just a way to help depict that this is a live software that goes hand in hand with our expertise to help formulate some um, scenarios and some uh, long range planning decisions. Of course, anything that's in that software package is completely exportable, so we've got some examples on your screen here where we've taken that information out and turned it into some information that's maybe digestible or usable by other folks that don't maybe have access to that software platform. So the last part of the request for our services included a long-range campaign and a bond planning exercise. So the outcome that we would hope to achieve there would be a long-range CIP, which would be largely driven and determined by the community. So we would use a stakeholder-driven process to conduct citizen advisory committee meetings, uh, present those various scenarios that we might consider, work back and forth with the community, figure out what the price points are for the different options, and eventually develop a prioritized list that gets presented to the Board of Trustees as a recommendation going forward. Linked up to that outcome, we have a, a requirement in our contract that's pending here before you to do some messaging. Uh, that messaging includes a lot of different things. So you saw uh, some information about uh, work that we've done at Sheldon ISD, preparing uh, some graphics and content pieces for them as a part of their $285 million bond. We've got some bookmarks here, just a lot of different collateral pieces that will be produced as a part of our work here for you, including little letters and all these sorts of things. The big point of this outcome piece here that we want to highlight is consistency in the messaging, uh, consistency in the appearance of the messaging. Uh, it's a really important <coughs> attribute toward a successful long-term campaign. So there you go. There's a brief overview. I'm happy to take it. Is any of the messaging uh, geared or structured toward social media? So we do have some pieces that will be social media driven, but we will be relying heavily on the district for a lot of those pieces. They have the connection to the contacts in the community, but we'll furnish some of the collateral that will be used as a part of it.
late to live cost data. So when you input those needs and those efficiencies, it, it stays current day after day. Any other questions? Yeah, I'm curious about the uh, There's a motion to approve the city's assessment and capital improvements plan agreement with LA. Second. Motion to move to second. All those opposed say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. Item 18 on the agenda is consideration of board meeting date change. Oh. Board administration has to consider changing the date of the July regular meeting from July 24th to July 17th. July 17th is the third Monday of the month, which is the typical. We originally set it for a different reason, but that reason. We did. We usually, uh, over the past few years, have shut down during July. And uh, this year, we're not doing that. Fine. I can have my work. <laughs> Sorry, Okay. <laughs> I would rather work that week and take off another week. <laughs> <laughs> take off spend money anyway. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions? Is there a motion to approve the. Board meeting date change for the month of July. Second. Motion has been moved and second. All those opposed say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is approved. There being no further business on the agenda, the meeting is adjourned at 8.36.